Drie minutes nummer 1578, uh, ik zie het goed, met een uitzending voor vandaag, 17 maart 2019. Dit is het bulletin van zondag. Helaas ben ik vandaag, helaas ben ik vandaag een beetje te laat. Dat ging helaas niet anders. Ik ben zelfs op deze zondag dus nog aan het werk, echt waar. Dit, this bulletin will be largely in English. Dit bulletin is grotendeels in het Engels. Ik herhaal verder vandaag aan het einde de data van gisteren, de eigen data, alleen de eigen data. Niet het uh, shortwave radiogram opnieuw. Uh, dus de eigen data. En die eigen test die bestaat uit drie streams. Uh, om alles te ontvangen moet je uh, Valdigi daarvoor drie maal openen. Deze drie streams die moet je verder handmatig instellen. De eerste stream die zit op 1100 hertz met MFSK 32. 1100 hertz met MFSK 32. De tweede zit op 1850 met MFSK 32. 1850 met MFSK 32. Deze twee streams die ontvangen elk een foto. Dus als je het begin mist, dan gaat het verder helemaal mis. Uh, de derde stream is alleen data en dat is MFSK 8 en die zit op 500 hertz. MFSK 8 op 500 hertz. Dus twee streams met MFSK 32, eentje 1100, de andere 1850 hertz. 1850 hertz ja. En een derde stream met MFSK 8 op 500 hertz. Voor die drie streams worden dus geen Read Solomon schakelcodes uitgezonden. Vandaag in de uitzending verder het nieuws van de ARRL, gevolgd door de Foundations column van Onno. Daarna is er het RCB nieuws, gisteren in de versie van RCB zelf, vandaag in de geliktere versie van TX Factor. De tekst is echter hetzelfde. This is ARRL Audio News, your weekly summary of news highlights from the world of amateur radio. If you retransmit audio news through a repeater, listen for the Morse code K character. Followed by four seconds of silence. That's your cue to stop transmitting so that your repeater timer can reset. I'm Carla Ferreira, KC1HSX, and these are our stories for Friday, March 15th. The FCC has invited public comments on ARRL's 2018 petition for rulemaking, now designated as RM11828, which asked the FCC to expand HF privileges for technician licensees to include limited phone privileges on 75, 40, and 15 meters, plus RTTY, and digital mode privileges on 80, 40, 15, and 10 meters. Interested parties have 30 days to comment. The technician enhancement proposals stem from the recommendations of the ARRL Board of Directors Entry-Level License Committee, which explored various initiatives and gauged member opinions in 2016 and 2017. ARRL said its proposal is critical to develop improved operating skills, increasing emergency preparedness participation, improving technical self-training, and boosting overall growth in the amateur service, which has remained nearly inert at about 1% per year. The entry-level license committee determined that the current technician class question pool already covers far more material than necessary for an entry-level exam to validate expanded privileges. ARRL told the FCC that it would continue to refine examination preparation and training materials aimed at STEM topics, increase outreach and recruitment, work with amateur radio clubs, and encourage educational institutions to utilize amateur radio in STEM and other learning programs. High interest in the recently announced updated ARRL Introduction to Emergency Communications course, known as EC-001, is prompting a call for additional class mentors to help meet the demand, which ARRL Lifelong Learning Manager Chris Bickle, K1BIC, says is exceeding projections. The EC-001 course covers the broad range of radio communication technologies, communication techniques, and emergency management skills necessary in helping served agencies respond to and recover from disasters. EC-001 mentors should be ARRL members. They should be active, experienced, general class, or higher amateur radio licensees and at least 18 years old. Mentors should have experience in public service communication and in amateur radio emergency service activities and come with the recommendation of their section managers. In addition to the EC-001 course, prospective mentors should have completed ICS 100, 200, 700, and 800, the FEMA Professional Development Series, and National Weather Service Skywarn Training. 
professional experience in emergency response or communication, and as a trainer or educator is desirable, with interest or experience in distance learning. Candidates should possess sufficient computer skills, be able to interact with online course students and with other mentors, and be able to maintain adequate computer equipment. Appointment as an ARRL field instructor or as a mentor for the ARRL Public Service Communications Training Program is for three years. Renewable based on satisfactory performance as an active instructor mentor and the successful fulfillment of all current qualifications and requirements. For more information, contact ARRL Emergency Preparedness Assistant Ken Bailey, K1FUG at K1FUG at ARRL.org. In the 2018 update of his survey of modes used on the air, Club Log's Michael Wells, G7VJR, says the number of Club Log users uploading at least one FT8 contact to the site grew from 8,000 in 2017 to 14,200 in 2018. Wells worked with data from Club Log users who, he reports, uploaded 41.3 million contacts in 2018, up by 12% from last year. Wells reports that 13,900 users uploaded at least one CW contact and 18,000 had at least one phone contact. The total number of active users was just under 22,000 across all modes in 2018, Wells said, who added that number has been dropping each year since 2015. The multinational team heading to Pitcairn Island in October has been issued the call sign VP6R. Anticipated dates are October 18 through November 1st. Organizers have promised an exceptional and memorable event. The team says it will have good antennas and high power, an excellent island location, and dedicated operators running all modes 24-7. Eleven of the operators are alumni of the unfortunate 3Y0Z de-expedition last year. In addition to EY8MM, the team roster of JR0OZR, K0IR, K0PC, K9CT, K9NW, N4GRN, N6HC, N9TK, W0GJ, W0VTT, W6IZT, W8HC, and WB9Z will have eight stations on 160 through 10 meters with three element monoband Yagis for 20 through 10, verticals for 80 through 30, and a 90 foot tall vertical for 160. The team had hoped to operate on 60 meters, but its detailed application to authorities to obtain operating privileges was denied. According to Radio Amateurs of Canada President Glenn McDonnell, VE3XRA, amateur radio in Canada grew by 1,758 new licensees in 2018, the largest number in the past four years. In his March editorial in RAC's member journal, The Canadian Amateur, McDonnell reported that the country's ham radio population jumped from 63,317 to 70,198 between October 2013 and December 2018. Quote, in each of those years, the number of new amateurs has been at least 2.5% of the total number of amateurs in Canada at the end of the previous year, unquote. He pointed out, however, that the 70,138 figure, while positive, hides the fact that removal of the amateur radio authorizations held by deceased licensees has been what he describes as haphazard. In addition, it's not possible to quantify the cohort of active radio amateurs. In 2000, Canada became one of the first countries to make amateur radio license exempt. Canadian radio amateurs are granted an authorization that's valid for 125 years from the holder's birth date. And now with this week's satellite update, here's Bruce Page, KK5DO. Here is a once-in-a-lifetime shot to own a Kenwood TS-890S. Now you're thinking, there are lots of those out there in use. This is true. However, how many of those in use have been used on the International Space Station and have been autographed by astronauts? Now that leaves only one. This is a special auction by Eris, which begins on April 8th 
at 1200 UTC and ends April 14th at 2200 UTC. Besides the radio, there's a special astronaut signed six volume box set of the 2019 ARRL handbook. Auction details will be posted at aris.org soon, if not already there. Remember, this is a one of a kind Kenwood TS890S that has withstood the rigors of space used by astronauts to make contacts with hams on the ground, and perform dozens and dozens of school contacts. Even if you're not into auctions, a donation to Eris will help fund future projects. This is Bruce Page, KK5DO, for the ARRL Audio News. This is the ARRL Audio News Propagation Forecast for Friday, March 15th. The sunspot we reported last week is now rotated out of view, so we're back to a spotless sun and a solar index dipping into the high 60s. A blast of solar wind is due to arrive today, but the geomagnetic disturbances are expected to be relatively minor. We should still see decent conditions during the overnight hours on 160 through 40 meters for at least the next several days. On VHF and UHF, tropospheric band openings are being reported in Texas, Louisiana, and Florida. Some of the openings in southeast Texas have been pretty strong. If the forecast is accurate, Southern California may get in on some of this a little bit later in the week. And that concludes ARRL Audio News for this week. Our thanks to all contributors to this week's report. ARRL Audio News is produced by the American Radio Relay League, the National Association for Amateur Radio. For more information on amateur radio or the ARRL, visit us on the web at ARRL.org. You can also find us on Facebook and Twitter by searching for ARRL. If you have a question or comment about ARRL Audio News, email us at audionews at ARRL.org. This program is copyright ARRL, all rights reserved. 73, and thanks for listening. Foundations of Amateur Radio On Thursday, the 3rd of July, 2008, at 6 minutes to 7 at night, a developer called Dan, Kilo Kilo 7 Delta Sierra, started to scratch an itch and publish the results. The next morning, before breakfast, Dan added more. Since then, about 100 people from around the globe have contributed to that project. Some people made little changes, others made large contributions over many years. In all, on average, the project saw a change every 29 hours over more than a decade of contributions. On the 16th of July, less than two weeks into the project, it got a name. Chirp. It's been translated from US English to Spanish, French, Hungarian, Italian, Dutch, Polish, Brazilian Portuguese, Russian and the Queen's English. From the beginning of talking to a single ICOM IC92 radio, Chirp today supports 27 different ICOM radios, 36 different brands of radio, hundreds of different radios in all, with new ones being added every couple of months or so. The software runs on anything that will run Python. That includes Windows, OS X and Linux, and it does it with an extremely modest footprint, and it's free. Free in cost, and free as in open source. If you're not familiar with Chirp and you have a radio, then it's time to get to know this tool. It makes it simple to program your radio, to configure settings, and to make backups of your current channel listings. I should mention that this is not just for handheld radios. There are plenty of HF base station radios supported. When you run Chirp, it presents you with a window, where you have a spreadsheet view of the channels in your radio. You can download the channels from your radio or upload new ones. Changing a frequency is as simple as clicking on the frequency and typing a new one, with a full human-sized keyboard, rather than the poor excuse for a dial pad your radio has. If your radio supports it, you can supply a human-readable name, configure offsets, CTCSS and tuning step size, the mode and several other properties. If you're unsure where to get started, Chirp even comes with a list of frequencies to get you on your way. You can create different configurations for different types of operations. For example, if you're into SOTA, you can make a configuration file that has all the relevant SOTA frequencies. But when you head back home and want to use the local repeater network, you can build a set for that. If you visit a different state, another country, 
or if you want to copy your channels from one radio to another, you can with Chirp. If you want to get started, there's a beginner's guide, a list of frequently asked questions, and you'll find information about what cables to use, specific errors and issues you might encounter, and if you're a software developer, you'll find information on how to contribute. If you want the ability to program your radio on any computer, you can download a bootable CD that will run Chirp without installing it, and if you need help, there's an active mailing list going back to 2008, an up-to-date wiki, issue tracker, and of course you can download the source code, if that's your fancy. Chirp makes all that possible because one amateur wanted to scratch an itch. What's itchy in your life? I'm Ono, Victor Kilo 6, Foxtrot, Lima, Alpha, Bravo. Hello, this is Mike Marsh, G1IAR, and welcome to the TX News podcast of the GP2RS National News for Sunday the 17th of March 2019, supplied by the Radio Society of Great Britain and brought to you by TX Factor. The news headlines this week, George Dobbs, Golf 3 Romeo Juliet Victor, Silent Key. RSGB AGM online voting is open and train the trainers in Cambridgeshire soon. It's with great sadness this week that we learned of the death of George Dobbs, Golf 3 Romeo Juliet Victor, founder of the GQRP Club and well known for his writing in Sprat, Radcom and Practical Wireless. An obituary for George will appear in the May edition of Radcom and our thoughts are with his family and many amateur friends worldwide at this difficult time. Voting is open for the RSGB 2019 AGM that takes place on the 27th of April in Birmingham. Members will find the resolutions and other details in the April edition of RADCOM and on the RSGB website at rsgb.org slash AGM 2019. There's a Train the Trainers course being organised and hosted by Huntingdon Amateur Radio Society for the 30th of March in Buckton in St Neots in Cambridgeshire. For more information or to reserve a place, contact the organiser who is David Howlett and do it via email please to secretary at hunts-hams.co.uk. Keith Bird, Golf 4 Juliet Echo Delta, regional representative for Region 10, is looking to recruit a volunteer for the post of district representative for the East Sussex area. The prime duties in this annual and renewable post will be to liaise with the clubs and individuals in that area. There are opportunities to assist others and develop your own ideas to promote interest in amateur radio with the help of a team within Region 10. Anyone wishing to step into these roles should get in touch with Keith Golf 4 Juliet Echo Delta do it via email please to rr10 that's Romeo Romeo 10 at rsgb.org.uk Greece is the latest newcomer to the 60 metre ban. A ministerial decision dated the 26th of February published in the Greek Government Gazette of the 5th of March. This introduced a new frequency allocation table which authorises Greek radio amateurs to use the WRC 15 band on a secondary basis at 15 watts EIRP. The Dayton Hamvention Committee has announced their awards for 2019 and of particular interest is Pietro Begali, India 2 Romeo Tango Foxtrot, who's the 2019 recipient of Hamvention's Technical Achievement Award. He's best known for designing and producing high-quality Morse keys and paddles. Also, Chris Jansen, Delta Lima 1 Mike Golf Bravo, is the winner of Hamvention's 2019 Special Achievement award he served as president of the world radio sport team championship 2018 guiding more than 300 volunteers who put on the successful competition in germany from the iaru region one monitoring system newsletter comes reports that russian over the horizon radar has caused severe problems on 14 megahertz sometimes three signals were actually active at the same time each system with 14 kilohertz bandwidth and many splatters the transmitter is located north of pensa in western russia the german ptt filed an official complaint and the dutch ptt has also been informed 
JVC Kenwood UK has appointed Martin Lynch and Sons as the sole UK distributor for Kenwood Amateur Radio products. MLNS has earned more Kenwood Amateur Radio Dealer of the Year awards than any other dealer, and the sole distributorship for the UK reflects the continued support and commitment, says Kenwood UK. JBC Kenwood is committed to the amateur radio market and will continue to design and manufacture amateur radio equipment. The RSGB has now released a new intermediate training book to support the new amateur radio exam syllabus that starts on the 1st of September. The intermediate license manual for radio amateurs has been fully revised, reordered and contains all of the information required for those seeking to upgrade from their foundation call sign. If you'd like some more information or perhaps even go buy yourself a copy, head over to rsgbshop.org where you'll find all the details. That's the headline news this week. Time to look ahead to the rallies and the events for the coming week. Well, Sunday the 17th, it is the 34th Withal Radio Club Hamfest, which takes place at the Club HQ in Withal House on Silver Street in Withal, where the postcode is Bravo 476 Lima Zulu. Doors open at 9.45 in the morning, with disabled visitors gaining access at 9.30 a.m. There is free on-site parking. Admission will cost you £4. There's four halls of traders, including a bring and buy and a club stand. A selection of refreshments will be available throughout the day and bar facilities within Withal House are open from midday. If you'd like some more information on the rally, contact Ian Reeve, Mike Zero, India, Delta, Romeo on the landline, which is 01386 839 655. The Hamzilla Radio Fest, an electronics fair hosted by Dover Amateur Radio Club, takes place on the 24th of March. Located at the Discovery Science Park in Gateway House on the Ramsgate Road in Sandwich in Kent, the postcode is Charlie Tango 139 Foxtrot Foxtrot. The doors are open from 10 in the morning till 4 in the afternoon, and there will be bring and buy, lectures, an RSGB bookstore, special interest groups, and a trade stand. Catering is also available on site. And if you want some more information, give Aaron Mike Zero India Echo Romeo a call on his mobile, which is 07714 the Callington Radio Rally takes place on the 24th at Callington Town Hall in Callington, which is in Cornwall. Postcode is Papalima 177 Bravo Delta. Doors open at 10 in the morning, runs through to 1 in the afternoon, and admission will cost you £2. There's bring and buy and trade stands, and catering is also available on site. There is ample free car parking in the adjacent car park, and the rally is jointly organised by the Devon and Cornwall Repeater Group and the Callington Amateur Radio Society. More information and bookings are available from Roger to Echo Zero Romeo Papa Hotel on his mobile 07854088882. Last up in the rallies, it's the 24th of March for the Causeway Coast Glens ARC rally, which takes place at the Bushmills Community Centre on 14 Dunluce Road in Bushmills, County Antrim, where the postcode is Bravo Tango 57. 8 Quebec Golf. Doors open at 11 in the morning. Admission will cost you £3. Those are all the details we've got. If you want some more, get in touch with Stephen on his email at Stephen with a PH, Stephen769 at talktalk.net. And don't forget, if you'd like to give your rally or gathering a meeting and you'd like to get it into Radcom, onto GB2RS News, and on the RSGB website, it's very simple. Please send your details in as early as you possibly can. Do it via email to radcom at rsgb.org.uk you tell us we'll tell the world we do need to know about four months in advance to get yourselves in the radcom magazine Moving on now to the DX News from 425 DX News and other sources. Caesar Victor Echo 3, Lima Yankee Charlie will be active as Victor Echo 3, Lima Yankee Charlie slash Kilo Lima 7 from Little Diomede Island, which is IOTA reference November Alpha 150, between the 18th and the 26th of March. Plans are to operate CW and SSB on the 40 to 17 metre bands, QSL via Club Logs OQRS if you get a contact, or via the home call sign, either direct or via the Bureau. 
Alex 5 Bravo 4 Alpha Lima X-Ray will be active as Echo 6 Echo Tango from Nui. That's Oscar Charlie 040 from the 18th of March to the 2nd of April. He'll operate SSB, CW, RTTY and FT8 on 160, 60, 40, 30, 20, 17, 15, 10 and 6 metres all at the same time? Maybe. It'll also operate FT8 using a multi-answer protocol with a focus on 20 metres during his day and 40 and 60 metres during his night time. 0700 to 1700 UTC are the approximate times of operation. If you get a call, QSL via Club Logs OQRS, Logbook of the World, or via India Zulu 4 Alpha Mike Sierra, either direct or via the Bureau. Dagmar, Delta Mike 7 Papa Quebec and Reina, Delta Lima 1 Alpha Uniform Zulu will be active as Echo 51 November Papa Quebec and Echo 51 Alpha Uniform Zulu respectively holiday styly from Manihiki which is Oscar Charlie 014 in the North Cooks until the 25th of March and then from A2 Taki which is Oscar Charlie 083 in the South Cooks between the 27th and the 3rd 31st of March, and they will be operating CW only. The EIDX Group, the expedition to Togo, is on the air until the 26th of March. The plan is to operate 5 Victor 7 Echo India on all bands from 160 to 10 metres on CW, SSB and digital modes. And the QSL manager is Mike Zero, Oscar X-Ray Oscar and OQRS. The Italian de-expedition team will be in Uganda until the 25th of March. They'll be operating 5 X-Ray 3 Charlie on CW, SSB and RTTY. And for QSOs on FT8, they'll be using the call sign 5 X-Ray 3 Echo. And the QSL manager there is India 2 Yankee Sierra Bravo. Moving on to the special events news now. Sunday the 17th, it's the Army, Sea and Air Cadet units in the UK. They'll be carrying out Exercise Blue Ham 19 as part of a weekend of activity. Operating on the 5 MHz shared band, operation is expected from 8am to 5pm. QSO exchange details can be found online at alphacharlie.org.uk slash exercise hyphen blue hyphen ham. And amateurs may come claim a certificate by contacting 10 or more stations over the weekend and submitting a copy of their log sheet. That's it in special events, but don't forget, if you've got a special event planned, get your details into radcom at rsgb.org.uk as early as you possibly can for free publicity on GB2RS in radcom and online. And another timely reminder, if you've got one of these planned, UK stations with special event call signs must be open to the public. So our free publicity can help make your efforts more widely known. Moving on to the contest news now. The Russian DX contest ends its 24-hour run at 1200 UTC on Sunday the 17th. It uses CW and SSB only on the 1.8 to 28 megahertz contest bands where the exchanges signal report and serial number and Russian stations also send their oblast code. The BARTG HFRTTY contest ends its 48-hour run at 0200 UTC on Monday the 18th of March. Using the 3.5 to 28 MHz contest bands, the exchange's signal report, serial number and time. IRTS News reports that there is an evening IRTS Counties contest on Tuesday the 19th of March from 2000 UTC. It's a one hour contest on 80 metres for SSB and CW. And if you'd like some more information, log on to the website at irts.ie slash contests for all the details and all the full rules. On Tuesday, it's the 1.3 GHz UK Activity Contest. It runs from 2000 to 2230 UTC. Using all modes, the exchanges signal report, serial number and locator. And on Thursday, it's the 70 MHz UK Activity Contest running from 2000 to 2230 UTC. Using all modes, the exchanges signal report, serial number and 
and locator and finally next weekend the uk ei contest club dxcw contest runs for 24 hours from 1200 utc on the 23rd using cw only on the 3.5 to 28 megahertz contest bands the exchange is signal report serial number and district code and wrapping up the main news now, it is the Propagation Report compiled by Golf Zero Kilo Yankee Alpha, Golf 3 Yankee Lima Alpha and Golf 4 Bravo Alpha Oscar on Friday the 15th of March. There is life in the old dog yet. The lone spotted region on the visible disc of the sun managed to produce a minor class 1.3 flare on the 8th of March. Although not a noteworthy event as far as peak X-ray strength, the flare was associated with an eruption and what appears to be a faint coronal mass ejection. Much of the plasma was likely reabsorbed, but some did manage to escape the sun when viewing coronagraph imagery, courtesy of the Stereo Ahead spacecraft. This wasn't directed at Earth, and we seem to have missed it. This week's been characterised as relatively settled with the KP index mainly in the 0 to 2 range. There's been no sunspot since the disappearance of the sunspot we mentioned last week. So overall, not good conditions for radio, as was witnessed by last week's Commonwealth contest. The consensus was that it was one of the worst yet. Ah, nevertheless, some high scores were presented. Stars like 3 Bravo 8 X-Ray Foxtrot, Zulu Foxtrot 2 Charlie Alpha and 9 Juliet 2 Bravo Oscar, plus many VK and ZL stations were also worked from the UK, so it's not all bad news. Next week, NOAA predicts the Solar Flux Index should be around about 79, and the KP Index will also remain relatively settled at about 2 to 3. Now, the next big unsettled session is due on March 26th, thanks to a coronal hole with the KP index predicted to hit five. So look out for Aurora and make the most of the settled conditions this week. Moving up the bands now, it's time for the VHF and Upwards Propagations news. And after a week or more of very unsettled weather with strong winds testing everyone's antennas, it's shaping up to be much quieter in the coming week as high pressure returns. After this weekend, the pressure will start to build over the south of the country and develop a strong ridge. High pressure will drift northeast from the Azores and across from southern Britain to finish over Germany by the end of the week. Now, the effect of this will be a welcome return of tropo lift conditions, although not especially strong all the time. A good visual indicator may be the layer of stratocumulus clouds at around one to two kilometres above the ground, which will be at the height of the temperature inversion formed by sinking air within the high. These can extend over hundreds of kilometres to give paths well into northern Europe. Now, it could be a good week to test the other modes on VHF and UHF. Try a CW or an SSB QSO for a change. And if calling CQ, just remember to say what square you're in. The moon reached peak declination last week and it's at perigee on Tuesday. So it is a good week for EME with low path losses and high elevations. There's no meteor showers in line this week. So again, we've got to rely on some random meteors around dawn for the best chance of any meteor scatter DX. And that is it from the propagation team this week. And that is all we've got for your GB2RS national news for the UK from around the world this week. Now, we just don't have time to read all the regional news as part of the TX Factor podcast here, because if we did, believe you me, we would be here for hours. But we realise the regional news is important to you. And if you've not checked it out yet and you don't know who's doing it, I would suggest you track down your local newsreader who's reading your section of GB2RS with all the important news that is local to you. On the TX Factor website, we have got all the information of those that are doing it. If you head over to txfactor.co.uk you'll see on the homepage a gb2rs news tab if you click on that you can actually grab yourself a pdf file which is up to date and has the names call signs times of broadcast of all the broadcasterers of gb2rs regional news up and down the country so they're on the air on a sunday go check one of them out and get in the loop with what's going on 
in your locality. Don't forget, if you've got any news items for GB2RS, it's got to be in by 10 a.m. sharp on Thursday mornings at the latest. Send those in to radcom at rsgb.org.uk and your news will make the next GB2RS. I'm Mike Marsh, G1IIR, reporting with the TX News weekly podcast of GB2RS. Thanks for listening. We will see you back here next week, same time, same place, with the very latest update of GB2RS News. Deze minutes zijn dagelijks vanaf ongeveer 1900 uur te beluisteren. De uitzending wordt een dag later om half elf ochtends herhaald. Alle mail is welkom op het adres x xdvme Dat is ook te vinden rechts bovenaan de webpagina van de uitzending in www.a0ete.nl. De Daily Minutes toont iedere dag weer aan de hand van schokkende voorbeelden hoe een hobby mensenlevens kan veranderen. De internetfaciliteiten en studio hardware voor Daily Minutes worden gesponsord door 70 megahertzshop.nl. 70 mhzshop.nl.
En wie kan naar naartoe?